Welcome to Parallel Lines and Proportional Parts. Our objectives in this lesson are to use proportional parts in triangles and within parallel lines to help us to solve problems. For example, down below here, if you needed to know the distance from the base of the triangle to Wu Village because you were going to create a road, you wouldn't want to have to come to the mountain and drive or hike to measure this distance. So instead, you can use information that you already have for different parts of this mountain that create a triangle to help you solve that. Let's look at the theorem. The triangle proportionality theorem states that if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, for example, MN in this diagram is a parallel line to BC. If it does intersect the other two sides, then it divides the sides proportionally. For example, we have our proportion set up here, AM, this portion here, compared to MB here, is going to be in the same proportion as AN on this side of the triangle is to NC down here. These aren't the only proportions that we can create based on this triangle proportionality theorem. Let's look at a few more examples. Here's our triangle, and in this red box are the proportions from the previous proportionality theorem. So A over B is in the same ratio or proportion as C over D. But notice in this diagram I have drawn J, which is the entire length of the left side, and K, which is the entire length of the right side. With that, we can assume proportional parts related to the entire length as well as just pieces. Let's look at some of these parts. So our first one up here, we have A over J is equal to C over K. So here's A over the entire side will be in the same proportion as C is to this entire side. So as long as you're comparing the same parts, you should be fine. Let's look at another one of these. How about this one? A over C will be in the same proportion as J over K. So again, we're comparing a piece to a piece to a whole over a whole. And that works as well. How about this one? B over J is equal to D over K. So now again, we have a piece over a whole is equal to a piece over a whole. So the proportionality theorem really just says that because these sides are divided proportionally, then we can set up proportions using any ratios we want as long as we make sure that we're comparing the right piece to the right piece or the right whole to the right whole. Let's look at some examples. So in this problem, notice that segment BE is parallel to segment CD. And we want to determine the length of segment BC, so let's go ahead and label this with an X here. So this example is pretty straightforward. This parallel line cuts these two sides of the triangle so that the segments are proportional, which means that X to 12 would be equal to 10 to 15. So now to solve for X, we can cross multiply. 15 times X would be 15X must equal 12 times 10, that's 120. Now we'll divide both sides by 15. So we have x equals 120 divided by 15 equals 8. So the length of BC is equal to 8 units. Now let's go and take a look at a second example that's a little bit more involved. Again, here we see that segment AB is parallel to segment ED, and we're asked to find the length of AC, the length of BD, the length of DC, and the length of DE. So the length of AC would be the length of this long segment here, so the length of AC would just be 18 units plus 27 units, which is equal to 45 units. Now these next three will take a little bit more work. In order to find the length of BD, I'm going to go ahead and label it X. We can set up a proportion comparing BD to BC and AE to AC. So we'll have X to 36 must be equal to 18, to remember AC was 45. And now again we'll cross multiply. 
So we have x times 45, that's 45x, must equal 36 times 18, which is 648. Now we'll divide both sides by 45. And I went ahead and used the calculator. That's going to be 14.4 units. So the length of BD is 14.4. Now to determine the length of DC, we have a couple options here. Let's go ahead and use the length of BD, which we just found is 14.4. So 14.4 to Y. must equal 18 to 27. Again, we'll cross multiply. 18 times y would be 18y must equal 14.4 times 27. That's going to give us 388.8. Now we'll divide both sides by 18. And y is equal to 21.6. Therefore, the length of dc is equal to 21.6 units. Now I do want to mention this is not the only proportion that we could use to determine the length of DC, which we labeled Y. We could have used a proportion Y to 36 must equal 27 to AC, which is 45. And the result, of course, would be the same. The last length we need to determine is the length of DE, which is the length of this parallel segment. Let's go ahead and call it Z. Let's go ahead and call it Z. And this small triangle and this large triangle are actually similar triangles, which means their sides are proportional. So we could use the proportion z to 28 must equal 27 to AC, which was 45 units. Again, now we'll cross multiply. 45z must equal 28 times 27, which is equal to 756. We'll divide both sides by 45. Seven hundred fifty-six divided by 45 is 16.8. So the length of DE is 16.8 units. And that's going to do it for this video. Let's look at one other type of proportionality problem. This is now dealing with parallel lines. What we have here is line V, T, and X. And up here it says line V parallel to line T, parallel to line X. So in other words, and we can see by these arrows that all these lines are parallel. If that's the case, we have the same proportionality theorem. In other words, if I mark these, AB over BC, so here we have AB, and here we have BC is going to be in the same proportion or equal to DE, which is this part, over EF, which is this part. So if we have parallel lines, proportional parts are going to be equal if we set up a ratio. We also could say that AB, so this piece over AC, which is the whole piece, is equal to DE, which is this little part, over DF, which again is the whole part. And finally we can say that BC, so now we're looking at the bottom, at this small piece, BC in pink, over AC, which is the total, over EF, this small piece here in orange, over DF, which is the total. So again we can create proportion, proportional ratios to set pieces equal to each other as long as we make sure that we set the same small piece compared to the same small piece or the same total piece compared to the same total piece. Let's try a couple of examples using parallel lines. In our first example we have 12 here, 8 here, 15 and then x. So obviously we want to solve for x. Well we'll assume that all three of these lines are parallel and let's set up a proportionality statement. We could say that this piece, 12, compared to 18, will be in the same proportion or equal to 15 compared to x. And then all we need to do is cross multiply. So we can take x times 12 and get 12x. 
And then we can take 18 times 15. And we'll get 270, 270. In order to solve for x, we just divide both sides by 12. 12 divided by 12 is just 1, or 1x. One and then we can divide 270 by 12 and get 22.5. So 22.5 units using proportions. Now what about an example like this? So even though we don't have a number here, we can still set sides equal to each other by using proportions. Remember, there's different ways to do that. We could do a part over a whole, or we could compare a part to a part. And in this case, because we have multiple x's, it looks like it's easier just to compare a part. So we'll say x plus 12 to another part, 12. And then do the same thing for the other side. And we'll take 5x over 3x. Now we're ready to cross multiply. And when we do that, we have to be careful to keep these expressions together in parentheses. So when we cross multiply, we end up with 3x times x plus 12. And then if we cross multiply the other way, we want to multiply 12 times 5x. 12 times 5x. Now let's go ahead and distribute. When we distribute, we'll take the 3x into the parentheses. So in this case, we would get 3x squared plus 36x. And then on this side, we would get 12 times 5x, which is 60x. In order to solve this problem, we need to put all the x's on the same side and combine our like terms. So we would just move the 60x over. And now we have 0. We'll have negative 24x here, and then we have still our 3x squared. In order to solve a problem like this with quadratics, really what we need to do is just factor. You don't have to remember how to factor quadratics in order to be successful with this problem. You just have to think about greatest common factor. What goes into both 3 and 24? We can pull out a 3. What goes into both x squared and x? We can pull out an x. When we pull those out, it's the same thing as dividing. So if we take 3x squared divided by 3x, we're just left with 1x. If we take 24x divided by 3x, we're just left with 8. Now we've factored this into two terms, 3x and x minus 8. In order to figure out what our answer is, we just take each of these terms, so 3x, set that equal to 0 and solve, and in this case, x would equal 0. And then we take x minus 8, set that one equal to 0 as well. And in this case, if we add 8 to both sides, x would be equal to 8. So which answer is correct, 0 or 8? Well, when you get a situation like this, you should always check your answers to see. Let's try 0. If we're going to plug in 0, we plug it back into our original proportionality statement. So we would have 0 plus 12 over 12 is equal to 5 times 0 over 3 times 0. Well, you can see right away that that won't work because 0 plus 12 is 12, and 12 divided by 12 is 1. 5 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is also 0, and 1 definitely does not equal 0. If we try the other one, 8, we would take 8 plus 12 over 12 should be equal to 5 times 8, over 3 times 8. 8 plus 12 is 20 over 12. 5 times 8 is 40 over 24. And if you'll notice, if we reduce these, what goes into both 20 and 12? Well, 4 goes into 25 times and goes into 12 3 times. What goes into both 40 and 24? That would be 8 goes into 45 times and goes into 24 three times. So you can see that 8 works. 8 is our solution. Another way you could have checked is you could have just divided 20 by 12, gotten a decimal, and then divided 40 by 24, and you would have seen that they would have been exactly the same decimal. 
And that concludes our lesson today on parallel lines and proportional parts. So now you would be able to use proportional parts to help you to solve this problem. What is the distance of road that we need to build between the base of the mountain and Wu Village? If you'd like to take a minute to solve that, go ahead and pause the video. And when you come back, I'll have your answer. And the answer comes to three miles. Setting up a proportion and solving, we find out that the road will be three miles long.